Are you stressing about the holidays? Are you stressing about what you're going to eat? Are you stressing about if you're going to gain weight? Are you stressing about seeing your cousins that you haven't seen since the last argument? And you're like, oh my God, how am I going to handle the family drama during this holiday season and come out not only without, you know, gaining a ton of weight, come back, come out of this with my sanity and, you know, not cause further damage to my mental and physical health. Well, we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to give you some steps on how to survive this holiday without, well, without trying to gain weight, without trying to sacrifice your mental, physical, and emotional health. And we're going to get into it. So if you guys were looking for some how-to guides to get through this, we're going to do it together. I got you. Let's jump into this. Welcome back. My name is Danielle and this is Daniela Diaries and today we are sitting on my basement floor. Yes, if you guys can tell here we have a I'm trying to see what you guys see behind me. All right, so um, yeah, we got the bar. We're gonna do a whole update. I'll show you guys, but we are coming together. We are almost finished. But anyways, hi, how are you? Thanksgiving's this week. 2021's almost over. I don't know how that happened, but it did. So um, last year's holidays obviously were different because the majority of us stayed home and really didn't see a lot of people. And this is probably going to be the first time a lot of you have come into contact with the majority of your family in a uh, closed setting because, you know, it's been warm and we've been out living our lives. And a lot of this is a, this upcoming family gatherings causes a lot of stress for a majority of us because it's very hard to navigate a lot of different personalities in a situation, especially if you are like me and you were really working on your mental health this year and how to react. And we talk about this a lot on the Feminal Society, so this video is going to kind of be a two-in-one. Um, usually on the Feminal Society we talk about these things, but I wanted to um, address this also with my keto weight loss update because emotional eating is a very real thing and a lot of people eat their emotions when they are stressed, when they are sad, when they are angry, when some people just choose to eat instead of saying something, they use it as a coping mechanism, whatever the case may be, it is it is true, this happens. And it is a very real addiction and it is a very surreal and defeating moment, you know? I, I can recall moments where I would literally like, it's almost like I black out and I would just like shove my face to try to just put a bandaid on either the anger or the sadness or the hurt feelings that I had from either somebody's look, somebody's comment or someone's lack of comments or someone's lack of looks. And it was hard. It was really hard. And through this last six months, I really focused on improving myself mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Um, I did therapy and throughout my therapy, the main, the main idea was how to react, how to control my reactions, how to cope with, cope and, and react in certain situations and how to deal with emotions and how to deal with them in a positive manner. Whereas kind of being self-destructive because I was very, very self-destructive. And um, it, it's it's a very eye-opening experience. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard and it's not going to be easy. But I want to give you some tips that I have been taught in therapy to help us survive these holidays. Um, these videos usually kind of come in with like a weight loss update. Um, I'm just going to talk about it really quickly because... This video, this new journey that I've been on has been way less about weight loss than it is about improving my overall health. Um, weight loss sounds great. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, and I'm not trying to be negative and kind of go down this road. I've uh, seen a couple of videos from a lot of creators lately, and I'm, I'm not going to, I mean, you guys can kind of see my views and see that my videos, especially when it comes to keto and weight loss, are not hitting. Um... I don't know if it's because I'm not promoting fast weight loss or whatever the case may be, or maybe you guys are just, you know, 
done with that part or you know a lot of people are moving on i think a lot of people also since the holidays are here they're like look i don't even care about weight loss right now i don't care about dieting i don't care about you know making better choices um i just want to eat the things and enjoy life and that's okay if that's where you're at and that's fine that's your decision this is your journey i'm not you um, but quickly, we're going to kind of talk about it. So you guys know I started a four-week journey. We are now on week, we're going to start week three. So I'm training, straight training four days a week and uh, cardio six days a week. I am in the gym usually by like 5, 5.30 every morning, um, six days out of the morning, and I love it. I recently had seen somebody say something about um, my last video. I kind of said, you know, you got to hustle, you got to grind, you got you to do this for you. And they kind of said, like, that's kind of a toxic mentality. And I, I, I guess, I mean, for me, it wasn't toxic. For me, this to me, the God's honest truth, especially when you're on a health journey um, and trying to make better food choices and moving your body, you have to hustle for it. You have to get up and you have to grind it out. You have to make the decision to do it when you don't want to. It has been the last four days this week have been 23 degrees when I've left for the gym in the morning. It is freezing. It is dark out. My bed is warm and I will lay there and I'm like, oh, I don't want to get up and I will make a few excuses. Oh, I'll do it later or, uh, you know, but I know if I don't do it, if I don't show up right now for myself, nobody will. Even though if you guys are on my team and you're in my corner, you can't work out for me. You can't push away the 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 from the table for me. You can't make in food formed food choices for me. I have to do it. I have to want it. I have to hustle for myself, for my dreams, for my life, for my well-being, okay? And if that seems toxic to you, then I'm sorry, but that's how I think of it and maybe I'm not the one for you. There are plenty of other people who will take the the uh, kids glove approach and be like, oh, well, this week I, I, I decided to eat burgers and pizza because I just felt like it was a really important moment in my family's life. So I'm going to do that and then I'll start again next week. And I decided not to work out because I was tired and I, that's that's on you. But you're not improving nothing and you're just pushing yourself further down the line. And I'm not, I've done that. I, I pushed myself as far as behind the line as possible to whereas now I need to show up for me and I need to invest in me and I need to be, you know, the sergeant in my life to be like, get up, move, do this. You have to do this because you're not getting any younger. Your heart's not going to be any stronger. Your lungs aren't going to be any clearer. You, your, your, your brain isn't going to be as crisp and fresh. You have to do it for yourself. And that's what I do. Um, scale wise, I lost. I'm. I woke up this morning at 172.1. So I think I lost like a pound. Um, at the end, I will do a quick like body shot. I, you know what? I'll stand up and do it right now if you guys can see me. Um, so I just came from the gym. Well, not just came. I just took my kids to school. But I feel like we're looking real good. I mean, my waist is. I just ate two, but. This area is the area we will just work on, but I feel, I'm feeling real good, feeling real lean, and yeah, so aside from that, I, I mean, that's just, that's a bonus. Um, it's everything else, you know, it's the dedication, it's the, I'm doing things that I never thought, I'm stronger than I ever thought I was, I'm lifting the weights I never thought I could, I'm testing myself every time, and I am showing up for myself, and I'm proud of myself. That's the major win for me. If my clothes fit better, great. The scale moves, great. But the fact that I'm making good food choices, I'm not obsessing over my plates, you know, I'm eating good wholesome foods, and yeah, I'm still not the best with tracking, still working on it, but I still watch my portions, but I'm eating really well. Um, I can tell you right now, every day for this last six days, I've had a big salad, and it was just gorgeous. I put tomatoes and cucumbers and I sprinkled a little bit of avocado oil and a, a little bit of red wine vinegar on there and a little bit of rice vinegar and I put some season salt and it's been fresh and delicious and I've been really loving that and I've had that meal every day for lunch and it's been so good with some fresh like either turkey or chicken sausage or something like that and I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. 
my gut feels good, my insides feel good, in here feels good, it's all come together. And this is what I want for you. So going back to dealing with the holidays, I know that we've talked about maybe making some keto options for dinner. And you could do that. I gave you guys a couple recipes this week. Um, I think they're really good ideas if you wanted to um, bring those as side dishes so you know where you can eat them. Um, if you're just saying, hey, you know what? Um, a friend of mine on here, Sophia, she said, um, you know what? I'm going to do traditional uh, Thanksgiving. I'm just going to do OMAD that day and make it my one meal. And that's it. That's fine, too. I'm not telling you. It's unrealistic for me to say don't eat your mom's stuffing. It's unrealistic for me to say, watch everybody eat and then just eat a, a pile of like unseasoned spinach or something. Because this is where the problem lies. It's either, it's very extreme on this spectrum of eating. It's either, you know, you're eating all the things and saying to hell with it, or you're eating nothing and being miserable and not, you know, uh, learning learning in this process and that's kind of where the health introducing the mental health aspect of this of this health journey is food is not the enemy okay it's our relationship with food that has made it the enemy so if you want to have your mom's stuffing then have some of your mom's stuffing the thing is is don't gorge on it you know if you have to you know serve yourself. I mean, honestly, just serve your and be honest with yourself. Serve yourself a, 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 a fist sized portion of it and put it on there. Eat it slower. Every time you take a bite, drink some water so it could help fill you up. You know, make sure a majority of your plate is a good protein and then maybe just give yourself a couple pieces of, of a side. If your mom made, you know, your favorite pumpkin pie, you know what? Get your, if your husband or your kids are having a piece, say, hey, you know what? Let me get a bite. And don't take like, don't take a dad tax bite, but take yourself a bite, get yourself the taste, smooth it around the roof of your mouth, have yourself a cup of coffee. As you know, the coffee, make it a little sweet, maybe get one of those like flavored cake cups so you could have that dessert feeling. And that's it. You could still enjoy it. It's just the portion. It's the, you, it, I feel like when it was me before this year, before I've addressed these issues, I, I literally am closing my eyes because I could see me. I could see me with my two plates. And it was, you know, big ass plate of stuffing that my mom made. And then, you know, whatever, what else she would make. My mom, my mom's stuffing has always been my favorite. And then we always go to Leo's mom's afterwards. And I would have like the, she would make this like jalapeno cornbread and I would have a big old chunk of that. And, and it was like, and I wasn't even hungry, but I was like, oh my God, <laughs> Like I literally would, I would be so full and I could feel it sitting here. Like thinking about how I would eat literally now is physically making me sick. Where it, it, like it was just so much and I had no control. And I looked back on it and I remember trying to make it like a joke and being like, it only comes once a year. I mean, it really doesn't only come once a year. I can make that stuffing or that cornbread any time of the day, any time of the year. But in my head, that was the reason behind it. That was the reason for me gorging. And I remember driving home and knowing when I go home, I was gonna throw up because I ate so much. And I would literally be so disgusted with myself. And I, I didn't know why I did that. Why would I do that? Why would I eat like that? I could have had the bread or the, I, my, Leo makes mom make some cornbread. You know what? I'm going to have me a little slice. And I'm going to eat it and I'm going to enjoy it. You know, instead of just sitting down, this is another trick that I've learned. Instead of just sitting down and like not talking, and like, <laughs> sit down and, and conversate. I think a lot of people, that's what their, their idea is. Well, food is, is, is an occasion. It's a, an event and this and that. It's, not an event when you're not, I mean, it's an event when you're around people and it's social and you're talking and you're, you know, you know, talking about life and you're laughing and you're just socializing. That is the part that makes food an event is because the people in the event with you, the memories you're creating around it, it's not the huge portions we're putting on our plate to overfill and gorge ourselves. 
because that's not an event. That is self-sabotage and you just have witnesses for it. Okay, so if you're going to have something, just portion it out. Have some bites, drink some water, socialize. You don't have to stay, you know, take a bite, put your fork down, chew your food, chew it, look around. And these are the things I, I would literally chew, don't chew, and swallow, you know, swallow. And it wasn't like bite, fork down, chew, drink something, whatever, you know, drink the wine, drink the water, drink the pop, whatever, look around and oh, okay, hey, you know, and my kids, hey, oh my God, you know whatever it is and you you sit down and that's why I feel like this is a problem with the American culture because I watch a lot of shows and I watch a lot of vloggers and stuff like that and they're from Europe and it's a social thing like their eating takes hours because it's they're not you know they just kind of chew and they're just smaller portions and they're just experiencing it they're tasting everything they're not just swallowing it they're enjoying each bite each uh every texture every flavor and they're just it's an that is the event it's not you know i had to learn that i had to learn that and when i think about it i'm kind of embarrassed because i was like man i look like a freaking slob And that's like really embarrassing to me now to look back on that because not only was I eating like that, my kids see me and they learn from watching me, right? And I'm like, God, I hope I can break that for them. So there's the eating part. Let's talk about the emotional issues that come along with seeing family. I had to learn something and my therapist told me it and I was like, when I lost my aunt, there was a lot a a lot of family drama. I mean, I mean, it's really not that much better, but you know, we're just not seeing each other. Um, but there was a lot of drama, and I was in that mode to where it was like fight or flight. You know, like the first time someone, I was like gonna pounce, and she told me, Danielle, not every reaction, not every action deserves a reaction, and not every comment deserves a response. Not every action deserves a reaction, and not every comment deserves a response. So if you see your cousin's new husband, and he says, oh, you're so-and-so, I heard about you. And instead of like, instead of saying like, oh, what the F did you hear about me? Oh, well, she, you know, because right away we're going to get defensive. Be like, oh, yeah, that's me. Then just smile. Okay. Walk away. Stay away from the food table. Don't even go by the food table. Okay and just okay process it put it on the back burner talk it out either with your therapist your significant other you know on the car ride home you're going to be you're going to have that mental tally of checklist that you're going to go down with your spouse and be like did you see what so-and-so said or then you guys talk about it don't be in the defense don't be ready because maybe she said oh you're the cousin she talked about and you know, maybe she said, oh, that's my cousin Danielle. She has three kids or that's my cousin Danielle. She she does YouTube or that's my cousin Danielle. That's Mindy's daughter. You know, whatever the case may be, it doesn't necessarily always mean bad. You know, even if it's the cousin who likes to talk crap, doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. OK, and even if they're trying to stir the pot, not every action deserves a reaction and not every comment deserves a response you need to be the classy one in the situation even if they're classless you're going to show them how it's done another thing that i find especially in my family is if you know that it's going to be a heightened situation and you know that these if you got some unresolved issues going on stay away from the booze don't even go buy it and if you're if you wanted to have a couple if you wanted to have a couple cocktails Probably wait until that person leaves or until you guys got a good amount of space and dinner's done so you're not going to be in close quarters together because that booze, that sauce is going to add heat to an already uh, already a, a fire and you don't need that. Okay, so adding booze to unresolved issues and drama is not going to make anything better. It's going to make it worse and you're either going to drink too much and feel like crap the next day or you're going to drink too much and say something that you weren't supposed to do and to be honest with you, you're going to look like the instigator because they're going to say, well, she was drinking and then she started fighting. So stay away from the sauce until you're at least at home and safe in your own quarters, okay? Lastly, enjoy it. 
even if that cousin pisses you off and I know we cannot choose our family and even if they are our family does not give them a free hall pass to be toxic okay so if you feel that someone is being passive aggressive and saying things that you feel are hurting your feelings you need to remove yourself from the situation. Do not sit next to them by dinner. Do not sit across from them by dinner. If they come up to try to talk to you again, politely excuse yourself, go to the bathroom for a few minutes, just kind of, you know, diffuse the situation, calm down, recoup, and then come about it. Do not be the person to, if this person needs to know where to go, you don't have to be the one to give them directions, okay? Majority of the time, the people who are poking and prodding and trying to fight are deflecting. And their issues are, their fighting and their passive aggressiveness is saying a lot more about who they are than who you are. And if they are trying to stir your pot, don't let them. Okay? And remember how far you have come in this journey. Gillette, one day, one person, one comment just set you back. You are far more powerful and stronger and beautiful than you will ever know and ever see because you are always discrediting yourself and you are perfect and they are jealous and if they are trying to fight and pick something with you it is not about you it is about them and let them figure out their own problems you don't have to be the one to point out what their problem is they can figure it out on your own but you need to know how to handle yourself and your emotions in this in this situation so not every comment deserves a response and not every act rea not every action deserves a reaction and you will not find the answers to your problems in the bottle of a booze bottle a wine bottle or the bottom of a uh, of a pie it will not happen you will not find it and in the end you will have nothing but regret and you're going to feel awful about yourself so this season this holiday season how are we going to survive we're going to remember who we are. We're going to remember to choose the classy way out of the situation. We're going to remember that food does not have the, does not solve any problems and it does not have the answers to any of the issues that we have. And we're going to remember that this is about health, not about weight loss, not about being skinny. It's about being healthy mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And if you got to take a moment to pray, then you pray. If you got to take a moment to compose yourself, then you compose yourself. If you have to sit there in the bathroom and say, not every reaction deserves, not every action deserves a reaction, like I had to, then you do that. And you count yourself to 10, you give yourself a breath, you look in the mirror, you remember who the F you are and how you showed up, and you, are, you came to slay. And that's it. Happy Thanksgiving, my friends. Happy holidays. I'm so very thankful for each and every one of you. And thank you guys for joining me on this journey. It is, it has been a wild year, a, a, uh, a life changing year for me. And I, I thank you for being witness of that. And I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday. Please stay safe, make good choices. Do not drink and drive. Do not fight with your cousins. <laughs> Or your aunts or your uncles and uh enjoy enjoy it because you guys have done a really wonderful job on you this year and i see your progress and i see your transformation and i am honored to call you guys my friends so i'll see you on the next one bye friends